Hello! In this video, we're going to cover part of Chapter 8 in Chemistry in, chemistry in Context. And this chapter is all about uh, water, and it's a most precious resource. And we're going to start by looking at some of the unique properties of water, and we'll see how it interacts with other chemicals and um, we'll look at issues of where it comes from and what affects it affects its quality so we're gonna uh, in this video we're gonna focus on on two objectives one is to differentiate between solids and liquids and gases and then the second is to look at some of the unique properties of water because it's a pretty special compound actually um, so uh, you may know that solids and liquids and gases have different properties and we can actually get a little bit specific about what makes them different. Okay, so you can see we've got some ice cubes here in a glass, which is a little bit different uh, from when we have liquid in a glass. The liquid kind of takes the unique shape of its, its container. And then if we look at gases, uh, they tend to fill a container uh, completely whereas liquids don't don't do that and so we can kind of categorize these properties of solids and liquids and gases and, and use that to differentiate between these three phases of matter and so we have a little table here and so some things we can observe about solids and liquids and gases is that liquids and gases are going to are going to take the shape of a container while solids do not. Uh, and then also, we can kind of differentiate between liquids and gases in that gases are going to completely fill that container, whereas uh, liquids do not and solids do not as well. And so then we can start to say uh, some things about um, these properties. We can describe them another way in that we say solids and liquids, they have a definite volume that, that we could measure. Okay, we could say we have uh, five milliliters of this liquid or um, uh, this, this solid, if I put it in a liquid, it's going to take up a volume of five cubic centimeters or something like that. And we can say uh, that a solid has a definite shape, whereas liquids and gases do not and uh, what kind of influences 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 these macroscopic properties are um, some of the things that are happening at the molecular level. So at the molecular level, solids tend to be very ordered, and and uh, the molecules tend to be very close to each other. And as we move to the liquid and then the gas phases of of um of compounds of, of of substances chemical substances they're less ordered and there's more space between the molecules all right and so this kind of leads us to some of the unique properties of water and uh speaking of the three phases that uh, matter typically um, that we see matter in uh, water is a unique molecule is in that it possesses all three of those properties at the typical temperatures that we see on Earth. So it's a, it's a liquid like rain or, or lakes and streams. It's also a gas that we, we can see in, in clouds and that can also be a solid like in ice or snow. And so that's kind of that's kind of cool and very useful to us also. Um, so uh, water, what's interesting about water is that it's a liquid at um, standard temperature and pressure. So that's 25 degrees Celsius is a standard temperature and one atmosphere is what we describe as the standard pressure. And other compounds that have the, the same molecular weight or molar mass as water, um, they're gases under these conditions. So imagine if all the water on earth was a gas that'd be a very different planet okay and there are some very important molecular reasons for that and um, also water has a really uh, 
high boiling point compared to liquids with a similar structure. Okay, so like hydrogen sulfide has a much uh, lower boiling point. Okay, um, and then uh, water also, uh, when it freezes, it expands. And so what this means is the solid form, the solid phase of water is less dense than the liquid phase of water. And this is actually, uh, we're kind of used to this, uh, but this is actually unique among, um, among molecules. And that's, that's really important for how the way things work on Earth. Um, water also has what's called a high heat capacity. So it has a high um, ability to absorb heat. And, uh, and this is really important uh, where bodies of water are near land uh, because the bodies of, of water can absorb a lot of uh, a lot of heat that can have a temporary tem tempering influence on the climate. Uh, so, if, for instance, in Oregon, where I grew up, uh, I kind of live on the I lived on the west side of the state, okay, which is near the ocean, and it tends to have a more temperate climate. Whereas, if you went to the east side of the state, which is not so close to the ocean, uh, it doesn't have uh, doesn't feel that uh, tempering effect. So, it has more extreme temperature variations. Um, also, water is called the the universal solvent in, in that it tends to dissolve a lot of types, lots of uh, different types of solids. Okay, and that's going to uh, conclude our, our lecture on uh, unique properties of water and the differences between solids and liquids and gases. Thanks for watching.